All right, guys. Today, we are going to read Maurice the Unbeastly by Amy Dickinson, illustrated by Carl's J Carl James Mountford. All right. Okay, so here we go. Maurice was not like other beasts. Excuse me. Maurice was not like the other beasts. His voice was sweet and refreshing as a dandelion lemonade on a hot day. He preferred his snacks green and organic. And he was ridiculously photogenic. So just to pause here to explain that the word photogenic means someone who takes really good pictures. Like they always look great in all their pictures. Mama and Papa Beast were concerned. Beast roar, said Mama. And destroy, bellowed Papa. You must learn to be less civilized, Mama said. We are enrolling you at the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. So, right now, his problem is that he is too sweet to be a beast, right? He's too nice. He's not roaring enough or destroying enough. Maurice munched quietly on his kale kebab and mulled this over. He was a beast. He was supposed to be fierce and ugly and gruff. He didn't want to be a gargantuan failure. So he tidied up his room, packed up his alfalfa fritters, and headed off to the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. And here it says, The Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. Hear us roar, hit the floor, we're the mighty carnivore. I guess that's their, their team champ. I mean, their school champ. Our first lesson, growled the headmaster, will be the frightening roar. The beast responded in a chorus of terrifying shouts. Why don't you do a terrifying shout? Go ahead. Very good. Except for, for Maurice, whose voice rose above the rest with a perfect high A. Ah. Now, that's probably... Today's lesson, the roar. Let's go with the note went home to Mama, a note went home to Mama and Papa. Maurice's roar is dreadfully melodious and delightful to the ear. Oh, like it's not supposed to be delightful to the ear. Lesson number two, the headmaster snarled, is messy meat eating. The beasts ripped and ravaged through the meat feast before them, except for Maurice, who placed a napkin on his lap and said, Excuse me, please, but is there a vegetarian option? Another note went home to Mama and Papa. Maurice is a terribly neat and polite. We had to confiscate his alfalfa fritters. Oh, so all monsters had to eat meat. I mean, they are monsters. Next, said the headmaster, we destroy. Each beast in the room crashed and crushed, wrecked and ruined. Except for Maurice, who dashingly dodged and stylishly sidestepped the mayhem. You're much too light on your feet, the headmaster scowled. So it's almost like he's dancing, right? Oh, he's supposed to, like, stomp around. He's not supposed to kind of dance around. Just when Maurice thought it couldn't get any worse, picture day arrived. One by one, the beast thundered through the line with their hideous, shattering camera lenses. Their hideousness, shattering camera lenses. Maurice was determined to get this one right. He growled and scowled and snarled and howled. Look how angry he looks. The photographer still captured the perfect glamour shot. <laughs> like a idiot. One last note went home. 
If Maurice insists on continuing to smile, he will never progress. Look how angry he looks here. How do you get a picture like that? Maurice was beginning to feel as if the abominable academy for brutish beasts was a gargantuan mistake. Just then, a ruckus erupted in the classroom. An unidentified creature had infiltrated the academy. What is it? One beast roared at the creature, but the creature roared right back. Another beast bravely tried to catch it, but she stopped much too slowly. All the beasts quivered and quaked. Well, they were all afraid of what? Yeah, the little doggy. Except for Maurice, who says shade to the left and flashes winning smile. Here, creature, creature, he sang. The creature stopped and looked with big eyes at Maurice. Maurice pulled a hidden alfalfa fritter from his pocket and held it out. The other beast watched in amazement as the creature bounded over to Maurice and curled up in his lap. <gasps> Teach us this creature magic, the headmaster said. So Maurice was named the official creature whisperer of the Abominable Academy for Brutish Beasts. He was a gargantuan success. His paper, Coaxing Creatures 101, using the beast's softer size, won first prize in the school essay contest. He led a campaign to add kale to the lunch menu. Raise your tail for kale, kale on the menu. And he started the Academy's first a cappella group, the Barbaritones. Maurice was definitely not like the other beasts. And thank goodness for that. The end. I hope you like Maurice the Unbeastly by Amy Dickinson. Let me know how you, what you thought about the book in the comment section.